Namo Adidafa. Good morning. Thank you for joining me for our daily practice check-in. Listen, listen, listen. This beautiful sound calls us back to our true home. The third mindfulness training. Aware of the suffering caused by sexual misconduct, I vow to cultivate responsibility and learn ways to protect the safety and integrity of individuals, couples, families, and society. I'm determined not to engage in sexual relations without love and a long-term commitment. To preserve the happiness of myself and others, I'm determined to respect my commitments and the commitments of others. I will do everything in my power to protect children from sexual abuse and to prevent couples and families from being broken by sexual misconduct. We've been reading The Body, uh, Dhamma Reflections on Aging, Sickness, and Death by the nuns of Amaravati. And today we're beginning the Dhamma talk by Ajahn Kandasiri called Meeting Death and Sadness. <clears throat> Recently, the young son of one of our most faithful lay friends died. Such an event is a terrible shock, and it's also a strong reminder of the fragility of our human existence. It shows that nothing in this world of conditions can be relied on as a source of lasting happiness and well-being. Certainly, we can enjoy the pleasures of life and experience wonderful relationships with others. We can know enormous amounts of sense pleasure and mental pleasure, all kinds of satisfaction. But when we come to appreciate the fact of change, anicca, we see that none of these things can satisfy us in any lasting way. There's much joy to be found in relationships, but if we rely on them too much, sooner or later, there will be tremendous sorrow when the time of separation comes. It was this sense of vulnerability that led the young prince Siddhartha Gautama to leave home in search of some kind of stability, some place of balance within the human realm. Having come to appreciate the inevitability of death, the death of his own body, and the bodies of all of those he loved, and the facts of sickness and the aging process, he was deeply disturbed. In an attempt to make sense of it all, he spent six years practicing all kinds of austerities, looking for a sense of inner ease and balance. He had realized that there isn't anything very stable and balanced in the world in which we live, and that no matter how successful we are, how popular, attractive, physically strong, gifted, or wealthy, no matter how much we possess of all the good things we can possibly imagine, there will inevitably be separation from them. After those six years of practicing austerities, Siddhartha Gautama eventually realized that he was no closer to his goal. He had just become extremely emaciated and close to death. Fortunately for us, a milkmaid named Sujata came along and offered him some milk rice. And instead of saying, no, no, I'm fasting, please don't offer me any milk rice, he realized that it would be a good idea to accept it as nourishment for his emaciated body. So he began to take food and little by little regained his strength. Then according to the legend, on the full moon of May, sitting beneath, underneath the Bodhi tree, he came to the realization that enabled him to win through to perfect enlightenment. He understood perfectly the nature of human existence, and through complete relinquishment, he let go of the causes of suffering. The 
all beings be well. May all beings be happy. May all beings be peaceful. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you for joining me this morning.